The two most celebrated automobile races in the world are the Indianapolis 500 and the 24 Hours of Le Mans. The Indy 500 has been the pinnacle of high-speed racing since 1911, and while its cars aren't the most powerful or most expensive race cars in the world, they routinely reach higher speeds than any other race cars and have among the most competitive races found anywhere. The 24 Hours of Le Mans is the preeminent endurance race featuring several classes of exotic cars racing at the same time, allowing viewers to effectively watch multiple races at once while enjoying more passes than any other type of racing. The Acura Grand Prix of Long Beach gives us races featuring cars that compete in both these iconic events in a single weekend on a gorgeous Oceanside track that's the longest standing road race in the United States. If that wasn't enough, it also features more racing including stadium super trucks, formula drift, and even historic Indy cars. For drivers, winning at Long Beach is always a career highlight. Here's what we've learned about visiting this annual event. There are a lot of ways to get to the race. We've tried three of them. We tried mass transit on one occasion to beat the Friday traffic. It involved driving to the LA Metro Subway B-Line station in North Hollywood, then riding to the 7th Street Metro station, then transferring to the A-Line train to Long Beach. We did this in 2019 and found that the A-Line was closed for servicing, so we retreated to a bus ride from downtown Los Angeles to the race entrance in Long Beach. We learned it was the slowest way to go and only practical if you happen to live within walking distance to a Metro Line train. In 2024, we opted for what we consider the best way to visit the Grand Prix. We learned that the marina adjacent to the track rents out slips to visitors during the event. All you need to do is submit an application to the harbor office on the first day of the year that they're open. Slips are then assigned in February based on the order that applications were submitted. When the slip is confirmed, you have to go back to the office, show the required paperwork, pay for the mooring fee of what was $6 per foot of boat length per night, and wait to get your slip assignment. You'll also receive daily wristbands to allow access to the dock. This is our third journey to the Long Beach Grand Prix, and each time we've ramped it up a level. This time, I think we got it right. So now we're traversing the Santa Monica Bay, and we're coming up on Palos Verdes Peninsula in a little bit, at which point we're gonna round the turn and make it make a uh, dash towards the Long Beach LA Harbor area. So we're getting there. This is certainly beats ma beating mass transit at every way that you can possibly measure it. The view is substantially better than being on the 405, the 710, or the 110. I, I wasn't told there'd be math. Here we are, rounding Palos Verdes Peninsula. And the beautiful Terrania Resort. And those blue umbrellas are Nelson, named after Mike Nelson from Sea Hunt. One sure sign you're entering Long Beach Harbor is the Queen Mary and the dome that used to contain the Spruce Goose. And the entrance to Rainbow Harbor emerges. Allegedly, we'll have a slip here. Since we were the first in line, we were able to get one of the best slips closest to the track. That was epic. While much more complicated than driving, this gives you a place to stay along with providing a scenic boat ride. If you have the means, or even better, friends with a boat, we recommend this approach highly. It's very good. This is our hotel room here in Long Beach for the race. So in case you're wondering how far we are from the track, that white barrier there, that's the edge of the track. And so the cars will be racing just on the other side of that. We'll find out exactly how loud practice is in the morning between seven and eight o'clock. This should be interesting. Here is Anxious. And there's the race course. The calm before the storm, Rainbow Harbor. Tomorrow morning, we should be getting more and more race sounds. Once in Long Beach, you still have to get tickets for the entry to the area around the track. 
general admission gets in, entry to the various paddocks and the Lifestyle Expo, access to the huge selection of food providers, and admission to the evening concerts. It doesn't get you a seat, however, but there's a number of places where you can wander around and view the race. We think the elevated viewing area just north of the King Taco Bridge, where you can see the end of Shoreline Drive straight into Turn 1, as well as the returning cars coming back to Turn 6, was outstanding. In 2019, we bought Club C300 tickets. That provided us with meals in a private sitting area east of Turn 11, the famous hairpin, as well as seats in Grandstand 29 with nice views of the start-finish line along with the Shoreline Drive straight as well as the pit lane. These were great seats, but in direct sunlight, where we were jealous of the covered pit suites across the track. The food at the club was just okay, but there was a cash bar and oddly no available water. In 2024, we decided to splurge to get seats at the pit lane club. Here we had comfortable covered seating with table space in front of us, as well as being provided delicious food and snacks, as well as a full open bar. Here we are at our seats at the Pit Lane Club. Pretty nice. Breakfast, open bar, and we get to watch the uh, practice going on for another half hour for the IMSA race. The biggest issue with these seats are that they're located where the track has a bend, and we didn't get to really get a good view of the start-finish line, and we didn't have a good view towards the right. So we were reliant on watching the race on TV screens, except for the quick flashes of cars that they pass by us at some of the highest speeds on the track. The pit suites to our left would have been much better viewing locations, but they seem to be only available to race sponsors. The event runs from Friday through Sunday. Friday is filled with practice for each of the classes of cars competing that weekend. It's a great day to visit the paddocks and see the cars up close as well as wander the Lifestyle Expo to see what they're trying to sell to this car crazy crowd. It's a mystery who's the sponsor. There's a hall over there and a hall over there. Yeah. A happy former Acura yeah. owner. Yeah, she's happy she's a former Acura. All the car stuff you would ever want and a lot more. Here we are on Pit Row. How cool is this? We are in the pit. Is that the starter? That's the starter. Defending champions pit box. Oh yeah. And the pit lane club just above the pits. Pretty awesome. I don't know that we could get any closer than this. Colton Herda's pit. Always has to be considered a uh, favorite. And here we have the uh, dining area for the pit lane club if you don't want to sit in your seats. Now we're entering the sports car pits. Our first celebrity signing, Gypsy for Mystery Science Theater 3000. And visitors to the pit lane. Hello. The racing gets more serious on Saturday. Along with some practice runs, we were treated to qualifying for the Indy race. Saturday, day two, walking over to the Pit Lane Club for breakfast. The Indy cars are already on the course. Coming for breakfast. Three happy customers. Here we are at the Fast Six, the final six cars, trying to get the top six spots on the grid. They're loud, exciting, especially the high ones. They're pretty cool. Pretty pace shots. It's much tougher to watch a race while you're sitting in the sun. Oh, yeah. It turns out if you're sitting in a nice shaded place with an open bar and also much more enjoyable.
It was a wonderful day of racing, followed by a great evening of trackside on the boat. Here we are in Long Beach on the day of the race, uh, the Indy race. Uh, just leaving the boat now, heading for the cabin. Historic Indy cars going on their second race. Meanwhile, Kathy's going in for the snacks. The latest from Acura, the Moto Compacto. Traffic jam in pit row. Pit row festivities right before the race. halfway through the race, and it's a pretty close one. So depending on which strategy wins, this will be interesting. Looks like Scotty Dixon! Hold the Hermes jacket, now it's close to Stadium Super Truck. Great race. We're heading back to the boats. After the race, the crowds start to thin, as do the boats. We enjoyed a nice meal at Parker's Lighthouse before retiring on the boat for yet another beautiful evening on the water while the crowds left the area. Time to make like trees and get out of here. <laughs> the next morning on Monday, we cruise back to Oxnard's Channel Islands Harbor enjoying the empty seas while taking in the wildlife show put on by dolphins and whales. While we were able to see a lot, we didn't make it over to the Formula Drift Racing in the early evening, nor the concerts. There is so much to see and do that we still felt like we got our money's worth and plan on making this an annual event. We'll probably try getting seats in a different part of the track but we'll definitely try to get a slip in the harbor as a base of operations. If you have some tips on where you think the best viewing spot for the race is, or what ticket experience is the best, please put them in the comments. If you know of something that people should really see at the Grand Prix, please share them. Thanks for watching, and see you on the next video.